Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Now you know how I feel when you hide my Indian. Oh, Uncle Joe, this is serious. We've she looked is. all over the house. All right, all right. Stop found. chattering like a nest full of baby blue jays. Your ma went to town. She left a note. What does it say? Nothing, just that she went to town. But I'm worried. Me too. So am I. What about? Well, Mom didn't sleep a wink last night. We heard her walking the floor all night long. And she didn't eat a bite of breakfast. I'll bet she's still worried about the train, Uncle Joe. Afraid the railroad's gonna scrap it. Relax. I took care of that railroad man. He wouldn't dare scrap the Hooterville cannonball. Has anyone heard the train this morning? No, I haven't. I haven't either. Then Mother must still be at the track waiting. Come on, let's go. All the mornings for the cannonball to be late. Cannonball, it's two hours late. Mother, do you think the railroad has scrapped it? Of course not. There's nothing to worry about. Then why were you awake all night? I, I, I was reading. Walking the floor? If I read in bed, I fall asleep. <laughs> Mother, you're worried about the train. Oh, I am not. Well, you didn't eat a bite of breakfast. Of course I did. I had coffee and buttered train. Toast. <laughs> Hey, hey, you sure started a ruckus this morning. Look at Uncle Joe, the cannonball's still running. Well, of course it's still running. I saw to that. Let's all go up and get some breakfast. Look, I'm going into Hootville to see Sam Drucker. What about? About the train. He knows the law, and we should be ready in case Mr. Bedlow makes more trouble. <laughs> I sure sent that Bedlow running back to the main office with his tail between his legs. He wouldn't dare tackle me again. <laughs> yeah, but what, what if somebody higher up in the railroad makes more trouble. We'll bring them on. The bigger they come, the harder they fall. I still feel better talking to Sam. No. You, you stay here and I'll go. Fighting the railroad's a man's job. Well, I, I kind of thought you'd get some of those chores done today. What chores? Well, you've been promising to chop some wood and clean out the chicken yard. You hear that? I'm fighting the CNFW Railroad single-handed. And she asked me to clean out a chicken yard. Bedlow, you had a job to do and you didn't do it. But Mr. Curtis... What did those rules do to you back there? You used to be the best hatchet man this railroad ever had. Now look at you. You couldn't chop your way through a watercress sandwich. Oh, Mr. Curtis. Don't just stand there. Start lying. Yes, sir. 
Well, Chief, I saved this land at least $150,000. If we junk the Hooterville Cannonball, those people were going to sue us for damages. Let them sue. Why do you think we're overpaying our lawyers? <laughs> Gentlemen, I tell you, the Hooterville Cannonball is through. But it's such a quaint little train. The CNFW doesn't have room for quaint little trains. Now, if we hook up the main line from Hooterville, extend the branch from Pixley to our existing track, we can cut 30 minutes from the schedule of the Fenton City Flyer. 30 valuable minutes. And that means money in the bank for the CNFW. Uh, but, Chief, you can't send the flyer through that valley. There are too many curves. We'll straighten them. And the trestle that connects with the branch line is absolutely ruined. And the others are too narrow and old. We'll build new ones out of concrete and steel. But the right-of-way is full of hills. We'll level them. And swamps. We'll fill up the swamps with the hills. <laughs> Gentlemen, we'll send our diesels through there so fast. Those Hooterville Hicks will think they're living on a launching pad. <laughs> now, I will have a full report for you by the end of the week. I am going into that valley incognito. And make a personal survey. But, but Mr. Incognito, I... Mr. Bedlow. You see, that's where you made your mistake. You told them who you were and they ganged up on you. Miss Hammond, I want you to have my helicopter and uh, wrinkle me a suit. <laughs> have them both on the roof in 20 minutes. <laughs> Drucker, all we can do right now is lay low and let the railroad make the next move. Sam's a smart fella. He says to expect trouble, though, especially from the president. Remember how mean Mr. Bedlow was? Honorous man I ever met. Well, from what Sam's heard, the president of this railroad makes Mr. Bedlow look like a Sunday school teacher. <laughs> Floyd, look. It's a, he a heliocopter. Yeah. What do you suppose that... Whirly bugs doing around here. Put me down outside Hooterville. According to the map, I flew right over it, but I didn't see a thing. Well, just pass the train, so put me down in front of it and I'll fly your eyes. Roger. Forget now, I'll be waiting at Hooterville, ready to be picked up Friday noon. Stop the train. Go easy on him. Listen, Kate, it's bad enough for a hobo to hook a ride on the outside, but he'd come inside. Yeah, but the poor fella looks like he's on his last leg, so take it easy, huh? Okay. Hi there. Hello? My name is Kate Bradley. I run the Shady Rest Hotel up the tracks away, and this is Mr. Smoot. Hello, Smoot. It's Mr. Smoot. How far are you figuring on going? End of the line. How much do I owe you? Well, my secretary must not have put any money in these clothes. <laughs> I've got money. Sure you have. Sure you have. I still want to know what the fare is. You wouldn't know what to charge him, would you, Floyd? No, I wouldn't. We never stopped where we picked you up before. Hi! What's up, Charlie? Oh, 
nothing. Just come back to check on the hitchhiker. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're the engineer, aren't you? Yep, sure am. Well, then who's running this train? My little girl. What? Betty Jo, my youngest daughter. Runs a train real good, too. <laughs> come on, Floyd. We're almost to the trestle. See you later, folks. They let your daughter run this train, a child? She's been running it for years. Has a real steady hand on the throttle. <laughs> Her breaking could stand improvement. What are we stopping here for? Morgan Creek Trestle. We always stop here this time of the year. Why? Come on, I'll show you. We're going to be here a spell. Well, I'm all baited up and ready to go. Well, dump it in. Fish ain't likely to climb up here begging for it. Quiet, both of you. I think I got me a nibble. Nope, the worm was just stretching. <laughs> oh, no. You mean to tell me you stopped this train just to go fishing? We well, ain't in no hurry. Well, I am. Let's get this iron rolling. You sure give good orders for a hobo. A hobo? I am Norman P. Curtis, present. Uh, presently a hobo. Well, if you don't intend staying one, there's no shame in it. Would you like to try my pole? Oh, no, thanks. I'm not much of a fisherman. Well, you never know till you try. Go ahead. Well, all right. But I'm... I'm not very good at it. Ooh, I wouldn't say that. I think you got something already. Uh, Either that or Betty Joe's using a mighty heavy worm. By George, I have. I've got a fish. A <laughs> 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 fish. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I caught a fish. <laughs> I haven't had a meal like this in years. The way you're glomping it down, you won't need another one for years. I thought those two freeloaders could put it away, but you got them backed into a corner. What do you mean, freeloaders? We give value received. All of you ride on our railroad for free. Oh, they do. Well, I'd like to hear more about that later. Yes, Kate and the girls and Uncle Joe and... Here you are, Mr. Curtis. The piece de resistance. Oh, Mrs. Bradley, I don't think I have room for anything more. Oh, you're just being modest. The way you pack it in, you could give stuff and lessons to a silo. <laughs> you have room, all right. Regarde. What's his own? I like Curtis. My fish. Where? Right there under that sprig of parsley. <laughs> Isn't that something? What'd you call it? Poison. That's French for fish. <laughs> I've seen heftier looking guppies. <laughs> this one did lose a little in the translation. Mrs. Bradley, uh, I can't uh, remember. Uh, 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 Kate? Oh, Kate, thank you. I can't remember when I've tasted such delectable food. I'm certainly going to miss it. Well, why don't you stay for a few more days? Kate. Tomorrow we're going to have ribs. Ribs? Oh, I really would like to stay, but no, I, I must get on to Pixley. Mr. Curtis, we all get down on our luck sometimes, so Kate. you don't have to be bashful with us. If it's a question of money, we can work something out. Kate. <laughs> You're very kind. Maybe I will stay on for a while. Kate, could I speak to you for a minute? What's your idea? And uh, just holler when you want dessert. We're going to have gooseberry turnovers. Gooseberry turnovers? Oh, marvelous. <laughs> My own fish. Maybe I shouldn't have asked her to cook it. Maybe I should have had it mounted. Kate, <laughs> why'd you have to invite him to stay? Why not? He's a very nice man. Have you seen him eat? He's got more stomachs on a camel. <laughs> Poor man. Poor us, you mean. Why, he's had everything but the delphiniums Betty Joe painted on the plate. 
Uncle Joe, I got a feeling about Norman Curtis. His coat may be frazzled and he may be coming apart at the seams, but underneath it all... He's a tramp. He's a gentleman. I can tell. And you got no call to whittle on a man just because he's come on hard times. Well, if he don't stop eating, our hard times are going to be asking his hard times to move over. <laughs> it's our bounden duty to help him. Anybody can tell he's seen better days. Not better eating days. <laughs> Kate, you're a mighty poor judge of character. Now, that Norman is a freeloader if I've ever seen one. He's not a freeloader. I ain't seen the color of his money, have you? Well, I... I'm going to let him work out his keep. He's going to work? Sure. You've got a lot of chores that haven't been tended to. Uh, Norman can be your helper. Helper. Oh, well, that's different. <laughs> Maybe I better go and see if that poor fella needs some more food. <laughs> The loveliest lady I've ever known. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Norman, please. <laughs> Tell me, Norman, uh, is that a compliment to my personality or to my cooking? Oh. <laughs> you know, Kate, I think these have been the happiest days of my whole life. M maybe it's because you've been doing something. Well, you have been keeping me busy. <laughs> I haven't chopped wood in years. <laughs> but you need a steady job. You're right. And when I leave here tomorrow, I'm going to the main office of the CNFW Railroad. And ask them for a job. Any kind of a job. Oiling, wiping, walking track. Why, with your brain, you could work up in no time. You really think so? Oh, yes, Norman. You got it in you. You set your mind to it, and in five or ten years, you'll go right to the top. I'll be so proud. I'll point at you, and I'll say... That's my friend, Norman Curtis, station master. <laughs> well, let's not aim our sights too high. Mr. Curtis, any special song you'd like to hear? Yes. How about Apple on a Tree? I don't think we know that one. Really, Joe, do we know Apple on a Tree? No. We don't know that one. Oh, that's the finest song you ever heard. Here, give me that thing. Wish I was a bully boogie bee. Wish I was a bully boogie bee. I was a bully boogie bee. I'd make my home in that cherry tree. Wish I was. You're 
Your president did not fire blank cartridges in Hooterville. I did not permit mawkish sentiment to influence my decision. Well, I'm sorry, Chief. I must have been hypnotized. Well, when do we go back to work up there? On what? Well, like you said, to hook up the branch line with the Fenton City Flyer. What are you talking about, Bedlow? We can't send that flyer through that valley. There are too many curves. But you said we'd straighten them. The right away is full of hills. But you said we'd level them. And uh, swamps. That's where you said you'd put the hills. Well, there are too many swamps and not enough hills. <laughs> and furthermore, the main trestle is completely wrecked. All the others are old and narrow. They're good for nothing but fishing. But you said we'd, we'd build new ones out of concrete and steel. What's the matter with you, Bedlow? Are you trying to bankrupt this railroad? Your entire idea of modernizing that branch is unfeasible, ill-advised, and unpatriotic. My idea? Unpatriotic? Gentlemen, I am leaving immediately to try and straighten out the mess created by our ambassador of goodwill, Mr. Bedlow, here. I'll have a full report for you by the middle of next week. Uh, or the week after. Well, anyway, I will let you know. Gentlemen, this meeting is adjourned. Oh, uh, Miss Hammond, dear. If you have a moment, would you please get my helicopter and my wrinkled suit? Mr. Curtis got that job. <laughs> what job? At the railroad. Before he left, said he was going to the main office and see about it. Kate, you're the worst judge of character I've ever seen. <laughs> Nutty Norman is a hobo, born and bred. Those kind of fellas don't want to work. Sure worked hard here, doing your chores. <laughs> yeah, I tried to help him make something out of himself. <laughs> Man, just don't take to work the way I do. Thanks for the lift, fellas. Oh, will I see you at lunch tomorrow? You'll we'll see us for supper tonight. When you eat, there won't be no tomorrow. <laughs> the first man I ever seen could get sparks out of a knife and fork. <laughs> now, Uncle Joe, leave him be. He feels bad enough not landing that job. Yeah, it's ruined his appetite. He's just as well off not getting in with that CNFW outfit. Yeah, I hear they are all a bunch of nuts. That's the case Nutty Norman ought to be president. Now, that's enough. I do hear they're awful hard-hearted, especially the president. They say he's a terror. Did you get a good look at him when you was up there? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. What does he look like? Well, he's a pretty good-looking fella. <laughs> and rather nice when you get to know him. You're as poor a judge of character as Kate. That skunk's trying to scrap our railroad. Oh, well, wait a minute. It isn't altogether that skunk's fault. Uh, the president's fault. <laughs> as a matter of fact, he wants to save your railroad. He does? Yes, he really does, Kate. But you see, he's accountable to a board of directors. And they are accountable to the stockholders and, well, you know, stockholders. Well, when the fiscal year terminates, they want those net profit dividends to be commensurate Norman, with... Norman, Norman, when you try to talk business, you're pathetic. <laughs> Stick to eating, that's what you do best. You don't sing bad. Uh, speaking of that, let's, uh, let's all go outside and do some singing. We've got a surprise for you, Mr. Curtis. Oh, really? <laughs> I wish I was a woolly boogie bee. I wish I was a woolly boogie bee. If I was a woolly boogie bee, I'd make my home in that old cherry tree. I wish I was a woolly boogie bee. I wish I was a woolly boogie bee. Yeah, doing our song. I wish I was a woolly boogie bee. I wish I was a woolly boogie bee. If I was a woolly boogie bee, I'd make my home in that old cherry tree. I
This has been a Filmways presentation.